Hey guys, today we have another unboxing video for this package of years. Let's open it up and see what's inside. CE05. Can you get what's figure this year ready? So inside our box, we have our KO figure of the Metagate Rift. This is from Cyber Era. The code name is CE05. And here's our figures is packaged inside our plastic containers over here. And then we have an instruction manual lying in here as well. So the instruction manual is quite similar to that of the original one. You can see in here, all of the steps to transform from his robot mode to his car mode. And then on the back side, we see the step to transform the robot mode to the helicopter mode. So yes, there's still a triple changer figures. Let's put the instruction manuals on the side so we can look at the main course. So that is his in packaging. So we have two sword for rip. We have two of their missile launchers and then we have two smaller swords so that he can attach on his shoulder and then of course we have an antenative face in here for Rift let's open this up so here is Rift inside the packaging the weapons already rubbed out here is our swords just one of the swords you can see that the colors is very shiny on the outside and in the inner colors we have just gray metallic colors and on the bottom the handle of the sword is also metallic similarly to the inside of the sword the face scopes already come out and then our figures already rubbed down as well so this is our EO rift from cyber era there he is inside the packaging so after you take out the figures you have to flip this part up so that we have the helmet of Rift fill out. This looks pretty cool. His is much smaller than I imagined. But that's good because this will be more in scale with the movie masterpiece scale. Rift is a bike for the figures. So we have all of the golden details highlight. Probably similar to the original Metagate Rift. Here's the closer look as the face. Brief. So this face scope is exactly the same as the Metagate Rift. Molding wise, the colors is actually a little different. So we have two different colors inside the face in here. Upper part, they just golden colors. And then for the mouth part from the nose down here, we have a different shade of gold. It's darker, almost kind of bronze colors. That's interesting to see. And then of course we have the antenative face for Riff. And that is this face over here. You can see on my fingers. That face is much more intricate in terms of details. And then to swap out a face, we basically just go in here. And then just take this off. So it just slide up like that. See? And then in here we have just a small peg that we can use to plug into this hole here on the antenna's face and just plug that onto Riff and there is Riff with a new face attached oh my gosh I think I like this face much better let's take off the other accessories that he has so that we can put the next down here so regarding the box it, this is pretty much it for the Cyber Era box. I guess it makes sense because they try to cut costs. So this box is the basic carton box that you can get for KO figures. Basically, there's nothing else that's advertised what's inside the box, but just the word CE05. But that's, that is enough because this is our main course. We buy these figures not for the packaging, but for this figure itself. Look at this. The plastic, they feel... Hmm, I think they feel kind of normal. Not very thin, but also not very firm. 
feeling either, so do be careful with these fears. This part already come up, and here of course we see all of the car part that got folded up in this design. And then this part here that held the top of the figure to the bottom, they just made of plastic, so do be careful in that as well, because this can get broken off. I'm matching because it's only got held back by this ball pack over here, which is entirely made of plastic, not metal. But yeah, that's also expected from a KO figure. Hmm. Let's see. Huh, I have never transformed these figures before, so I actually don't know where to plug this in. Okay, let's just hang it there for now. Wait. I think it's plugged in here. I think this part plugged in there. And then for this, do we tap in anywhere? Let's see. Only in here. Just got held up like that. Hmm. Doesn't really tap in, I guess, for this design. So we do have a West Fever here, so that's good. Yeah, I guess this doesn't really tap in. It just gonna stay there. Because I don't see any tap down here that can actually go from the bottom of the figure to his front part. Then we have a lot of transparent plastic, so do be careful with them as well. Like all of those are just transparent plastic. They are not durable at all, so be careful with them. And then we have a lot of just bare plastic colors. So this figure, I probably can custom paint this guy as well. Let's see, the butterfly jaw here doesn't seem to lock anywhere. So probably it should just go whatever place that we want it to go. And then we have some car part here. Hmm, maybe like that. Guess that look kind of okay. Let's put him down. So you can see just in overall how he looked like. It sucks that um the internal part with the joints they are not made of metal, so there will be a chance of the figures being broken if we are not so careful while transforming these figures or playing with it. That e our C E Rift. Oh, his fingers all <laughs> got bent up. That's look weird. That's face scope. That's face scope is really nice. Look at that face scope. It's very intricate details. And then we have new molded work here. Those words were absent on the original Metagate brief. So those are added on detail. They look really nice. They fit the character perfectly. I don't know whether that's Chinese or Japanese. I can't read the word, but that still look very awesome. I wonder if that's accurate to the model. That might be accurate to the CGI model though. The back of the fears. This is the first time that I have ever had this mold. To look at the details, so I'm not entirely sure whether all of the intricate mold other than the face scope and this part over here is different from the original mold or they also have any other improvement. That I cannot tell, but just look at the intricate detail to say that Metagate did a very good job on making these figures. Oh my god, just look very detailed for its size. The figure is kind of light. It's really light. Uh, lighter than the Masterpiece Bumblebee for sure. Or the KO Masterpiece figures for Bumblebee. Also for the barricade one, also lighter. Probably because they are roughly at the same height at one another, but this rib is very skinny. So it has less plastic on, in general. Okay, so that give him some weapon to see how he shaped up while wearing his weapon. So we just plug the weapon inside the palm here. doesn't seem to go in as easy as it look. Okay. It's just, the tap is not very strong. 
it's kind of loose. I mean, it tap in, but it doesn't really stay. Do I do it the wrong way? Hmm. Other than the handle here, so don't really see anything else. We can tap them in, and then those tabs are exactly at the same size. So it should just go in here. That's not very fun. It doesn't stay. It doesn't stay. The weapon. Hmm. That. Oops. Oh my gosh, the fingers come off. Look at this. So they basically just on the bone joint for the thumb. So this can come off very easily. Let's plug this in here. And then that thumb is not natural at all. Let me put it like this. Hopefully it's stay this time. It can't stay, but he can't really hone his weapon as well. If you knock it, it's probably come off. Like, it's stay for now, but that's not the best. Oh, I'll try to do it with this hand as well. Not very fun with honing his weapon. So that already not very enjoyable to play with. Oh my gosh, they could have improved the joys in here for sure or the tabs to put a weapon on because this doesn't seem to work very well like it's barely stay it barely stay it doesn't stay on strongly at all which kind of sucks because course for important figures like Riff like the thumbs come up again you see we would like the weapon to actually stay so that we can play with our figures this is not working. It's not working, guys. I'm trying to be very gentle here, but still. Like, it barely stop. It barely tap in there, and then it doesn't stay because the joist is kind of loose. It doesn't fit in tightly. It's only held by a tiny force of friction. It just doesn't work. Oh my gosh, cyber era, honing the weapon is like some of the most basic things that we want our feeders to do. So they should have made this better. Oh my gosh, now this one come off. See? See what I'm talking about? It doesn't stay. Like it barely stay there. It just... Okay, well, let's just look cool. At least he looked cool. The back sword. Seeing that kind of work. Oh my gosh. The sword. Ah, the sword will come off. I want him to at least hold one sword. And then the thumb keep coming off. Guys, this is not good quality at all. Cause the KO, but um, there's many good KO on the market with very good plastic and build quality. Not like this, not like a figure that can't even hold his weapon. At least there are two swords on the back. They should stay because that tab is easier to plug in. Regarding his articulation, he has bone jointed head, so it can look all the way to the left. On the way to the right and he can turn 360 as well just have to make sure that it doesn't pump into anything and then he also have this hinge on the collar so he can look down quite a lot not only by the bone joint of the fingers but also by the chest area here with the hinge and then he can look up a lot as well look at that it's of course uh, for the throw, it doesn't look natural if you turn his head all the way like that. But if you angle the figures, this will look more natural in some angle. I probably can make that pose work. But he does have plenty of articulation in his head for sure. And then for the arm, he has a butterfly arm in here. That is really good. He can bend his arm all the way to the other side. 
and it doesn't look unnatural on this side so that's very good engineer by metagate and then we have this 360 rotation for the arm then down here we have we have another hinge right above the shoulder here so that's good and then we also have this rotation right here right under the shoulder and then for the bicep we also have bicep squivel in here and then we have double jointed elbow that can do exactly 180 that's really cool 90 degree 180 that's really good for the arm articulation so i can say that for the arm articulation there's nothing lacking that bicep squivel and then of course down here we don't really have wrist squivel but the bicep squivel is really good it can make up for the wrist free wall already and then for the hand itself we have articulated fingers just one thumb here it's on a bone joint and then also on a hinge right in here with metal pin and then for the rest of the four fingers they just on two joints one here and one here so they are pinned together by two different pins and the same thing to the other arm that's out here we have waist articulation waist rotation 360 and then we do have an app crunch as well i guess that's from transformation but you can unplug this and work that up for somehow of course it doesn't look natural so down here for the leg we can of course do the 180 swipe yeah it can spread the leg very widely and then down here we also have the squeeble right under the legs that can rotate 360 and then for the knees can go over 90 degree again so also a double jointed knee just like the elbow, that's really good. Look at that. That's beautiful. Beautiful articulation. In here, I can tell you the on of this, they are rubber tire. Wow. That's really good. Look at this. You can even separate the rubber tire as well. Same thing here, we have rubber tire. I did not expect that because for all of the other KO, MPM, Bumblebee, none of them have proper tire. Then down to the legs, we don't really have any rotation, any squeeval here, just the same squeeval on the legs earlier. Then down here, of course, we have loss of ankle tilters. Look at that. That's beautiful. Of course, this doesn't look natural, but this will help you post your figures very well. It also have a hinge down here, ever so slightly. It doesn't hinge that much, like it's from this joint over here. But then, that along with the knee joints can give us a lot of articulation with this guy. This part over here can be shifted up and shifted down to accommodate for his leg being kicked up like this. So I guess we can move this down a little to accommodate for that that's the highest you can kick it like less than 90 degree and we can move this part up here to cover the joys in here so that he look nicer from the front look that does look nicer and look more natural as well but of course that will hinder articulation so if you want to kick his leg up you have to move that down that's pat down and just kick up the leg doesn't kick very high but that's good but um at least you can do this Whew. that's really good my knees look very nice on the shelf for sure too bad that his weapon can be held very tightly but too bad it doesn't seem like he can do his job very well at least one like that see just a slight knock off and the weapon will come off so not very good there let's do some side comparisons so you have some ideas of how these guys differ 
from the previous metagame figures. So let's put him next to MPM Bumblebee. This is a KO version for MPM Bumblebee. So essentially, he is the same height as Bumblebee. Of course, they have Bumblebee hunched down a little bit. So he actually is shorter than Bumblebee, even when Bumblebee is hunching down. Wait, actually, that's just the camera angle. If you put him side by side, he is taller than Bumblebee, his feet hunched down. But if he stands straight up, they are pretty much the same height. Bumblebee is a little taller if you only take a cow to the height up to the top of the head right here, not to the top of the helmet, to the top of the head then Reef is a little shorter than Bumblebee and that's good because I believe that there's many scale charts saying that Reef is 15 feet tall versus Bumblebee is 16 feet tall so Bumblebee is supposed to be 1 feet taller in many charts and that scale very well the original Metagate race is 20 cm tall and that is way taller than this Bumblebee then let's take out our Bumblebee we also have the KO Barricade here, this one is made by BMB Barricade. So you can see that if Barricade stands straight up, he would be probably the same high as Rip. Look at that. They look so good. Details wise, Rip look way more intricate. And the articulation on Rip is also a lot better as well. It's just too bad that he can't really hold his weapon as well. But if we only use these figures for display, he will look very nice. I'll figure something else of how to make him hold his weapon better. Then I put in some figures from Age of Tension or the last night. So this is the KO Unique Toy Optimus Prime made by BMB. So you can see that this scale actually worked out very well for this Rift. Rift is supposed to be 15 feet tall versus Optimus Prime is supposed to be 28 feet tall. Which is almost twice the size, almost twice the height of Rift. And this match up to that fairly well. So that's one Rift, that's two Rift, so that will be 30, cent, 30 feet tall. So a little taller than 28 feet tall, so that scale is spot on. Pretty spot on. Let's look at the sword of Riff. Oh my god, I never noticed how massive the size difference between the sword of Riff and the sword of Optimus Prime. Look at that. The sword of Optimus Prime is like way, way longer, way taller. So that's Riff holding his sword next to Optimus Prime. They own KO figures, but they all look very nice together. Look at that. Look at how small Riff is in comparison to Optimus. Yeah, of course, the sword got knocked up again. I can't deny that these figures look very nice. So, my purpose is mainly just to displace the figures together. And I think for that purpose, it looks nice enough. It looks nice enough next to this Optimus Prime. We put in Bumblebee as well. You we'll see that this Bumblebee, of course, is not from the same movie, A of Attention or The Last Night, but we don't really have any A of Attention Bumblebee or The Last Night Bumblebee in MPM scale for now. So for now, that will do the job. That's pretty good. So here's the sneak in comparison between the CE05 Metagate KO Rift with the Studio Series 45 Rift from the mainline Studio Series, you can see that the Metagate Rift is not that much taller than the Studio Series one. They actually look really nice together, but the colors are definitely very contrast, especially when you look at the face of the figures. The Metagate Rift definitely improved the sculpt for the face quite a lot, and the colors also look way nicer than the Studio Series one. I used to think that the face sculpt from the Studio Series looked too accurate to be true, but then this MPM size rift, they do that even better. And of course, with a bigger size, they would do that better, and a higher sprite point as well. But it's good to see the improvement there. 
all the details so that's how they look in the front and then for the sides look that how he looked next to the studio series riff of course i have this on studio series so it's look make him look a little bulkier if you take that off then that is how big the backpack is on the studio series here's are how they look from the back looks really nice for the smaller side the studio series rip is like very good i wish that the metagate rip actually have antenated hand so that it can hold the weapon better because as of now although he's very good he's too look good looking and his articulation is incredible but then he can't really hold his sword I would be happier if they just give him like in articulation hand that he can hold a weapon as nicely at the studio series brief then this figure will fly will be one of my favorite figures just for his look quality wise CE cyber era definitely have a lot to work on but what can we say they go for the cheaper price so that is kind of understandable and expected as well but yeah, this is how he looks next to the Studios 45 Rift. What do you think about him? Which one do you think is better? If you want to see more side comparison between this guy and all of the other figures from Studio Series from Movie Masterpiece, check out my side comparison videos. I will have them up for this specific figures here. If you're interested in these figures, pick him up. I think for the price, he is pretty worth it just for his look and his articulation and just that he doesn't hold his sword very well, so keep that in mind. Might have to fix that. Like, I will have to fix that as well. And this guy is definitely not perfect in terms of coloring either. So, this guy can look even better with custom pen job. Just adding in some more pen on him. Good luck hunting. Hey, you. Yes, you. Subscribe to our channel. Please, otherwise. Megatron may kill me again. And no, I'm not kidding. He's right there. Hey, Josh. So please, subscribe. I don't want to be back in two pieces. Your subscription means a lot to us.